established church in Jesus' name. Just sit down and bow your heads as we close our eyes in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your fellowship with us and our fellowship with you and with one another. We thank you, Lord, because of the great assignment you have given us, the great work that angels cannot do. That you have given us this privilege of sending out the truth of the gospel to turn men's hearts unto you. Lord, we know if we're going to do it effectively, you need to establish us and then we'll go out and bring others into the kingdom. We know you are going to do it. You brought your children, your servants, our brothers and sisters will have established hearts. And as we establish us in the truth with our heart and leg and feet and every part planted on the rock of ages, Lord, we pray nothing will shift us and move us in Jesus' name. Establish everyone. This great ministry you have committed into every hand, none of us will be denied of the privilege of being our best and fullest in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, establish your leaders. Establish your people. That Lord, through you, establish ministers. Then the church will be established in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, for all our overseers and all the national, state, and region, all our pastors in local governments, group coordinators, and, and coordinators in big cities and major cities, all over this continent and beyond. Establish all of us in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, the same key that you gave to people who have been days gone by, give us that same key. All our workers who are here from house fellowship to zone to district, all our choir members, orchestra, everybody, and all the ushers and all those in the kitchen everywhere, and security and the youth and the children's section, Lord, we need your establishment. Establish every one of us. The wind that blows will not blow us away from service in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, all the rewards that you have for every one of us. Lord, the rewards will be ours. Nothing will take us away from your work, and nothing will take our reward away from us. Bless your people this day in Jesus' name. Give joy to your people. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just love you. Amen. I need another one. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I just say, you know, and I can keep me preaching for two hours. Praise the Lord. And you know, when the amen is small, I feel I should just pray it for three minutes, you know, an odd number, and then just uh, quit. But when the amen is, you know, the amen that establishes the heart, I just feel this is time to preach. Praise the Lord. Now we're in Hebrews chapter 13, we're looking at verse 9. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. That you have in the very center of that verse, heart established with grace. If you look at that verse again, it, it, talk, it first of all talks about something negative. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrine. And then it switches on to something positive. And it says, for it is a good thing. That they had established with grace. And then they come to something neutral. Something that doesn't have any positive or any negative, any worth, any value, any essential commodity. And it says, be not, not with meats which have not profited them. The meat is neither, it's not poisonous, but it is not something that is of great value. And it says, not with me, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. And as we talk about the established heart, which are the very center of that verse, 
They establish heart. They say heart that is secure is anchored in Christ. They anchor that holds in the storms of life, in the trials of life, in the difficulties and dangers that we all go through. The heart that is established, that is solidly and securely anchored in Christ, firmly held by grace. That as all the saints are pitching against the minister, pitching against the calls of the Lord, and the appointed of the Lord into ministry, all those saints are beat against your sheep, that you are so steadfast and you are held firm. By the grace of God, it's a heart that is fully cleansed, a heart that is free from doubts, and a heart that is free from condemnation. It's steadfast and sure. On God's infallible word, the established heart. As you look at this verse, you'll see that the verse is in three sections. Section one, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. That stands alone by itself. And it, it is, it's a section that stands clear that needs explanation, interpretation, application unto us as ministers of the gospel, as we leaders and workers from all over, as we're gathered together. And the Lord is telling us that section one is something we need to take care of. Look at section two, for it is a good thing that they had established what's grace. There's another thing, another section that we really need to take care of. We need to look into that. How our hearts will be totally established on the word of God and the grace of God. And now it talks about number three. And it says, not with meats. And then he explains why we shouldn't be occupied or seriously involved with this kind of thing with the meats. It says, because it has not profited them that have been occupied, that have been concentrating on such a thing. And so that a verse, as it divides into three parts, the message also will be divided into three parts. Number one, apostolic caution against false doctrine. Apostolic caution, apostolic warning against false doctrine. Here the apostle cautions the believers Warns the believers. Here the apostle says, Be not carried about. And it's in the purity. He says it with authority. And he says it with clarity. And he says it in such a timeless way. He says, For now and for the future. And as long as the church will stand before Christ comes back between now and the coming of the Lord, it says this is the apostolic caution against false doctrine be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. But then number two, absolute commitment to sound doctrine. Absolute commitment to sound doctrine because it says it is a good thing that the heart be established by grace. Absolute commitment to sound doctrine. Then number three now, not with means. We shall not profit them. That have, talk, that have been occupied therein, that have been concentrating on those unimportant, non-essential, periphery, circumferential things. Number three then, abnormal concentration on superficial dogmas. Abnormal concentration on superficial dogmas. And you see those uh, Hebrew Christians, Paul the Apostle wrote to them. And he said, I'm concerned about this, that things that are superficial, things that are non-essentials, take your time, steal your mind, take away your energy and your efforts. The meats which have not profited them that have been occupied 
therein there was an abnormal concentration on some superficial dogmas in their midst. That's why that verse is so important for the church today and the church tomorrow and until the, until the Lord of the church, the head of the church, Christ, will come. One, apostolic caution. Two, absolute commitment. And three, abnormal concentration. Number one, apostolic caution against false doctrine. And let's look at that verse again, the first part now. Be not carried about by diverse and strange doctrines. And that's what carried about, or those words carried about. And actually, in other parts of scripture, it's again a question of to and fro, up and down, instability. And so it says, be not carried about. And Paul the Apostle is using the language of the sea. That is, uh, when a ship or a boat gets to sea, because of the waves of the ocean, carrying it here and there. And if the people inside that ship, they're not sure of their lives because of being tossed up and down or because they're being cast to and fro. And he says, in that case, when you're on the ship, you have no choice. When you're on the, in the boat, you have no choice because you are the mercy of the waves of the ocean. Because it will just carry you here and there when the storms arrive. And then it is just like what you have in Psalm 107. Psalm 107. It says in verse 23, They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, these are the words they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. But for he commandeth and raises the stormy sea, which lifteth up the waves thereof, they mount up to heaven, and they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro, they stagger like drunken men, and at the weeds end, then they cry. You see what the Lord is telling us, he said, when you're on the boat in the ship, and you're taking this journey, but there's no stability on the sea, and you're up and you're down, and you're up and you're down, because you're tossed to and fro by the waves. He says there's no stability, and therefore there is fear. There's fear of your life, and he's saying the church is like a boat like that. And when the ocean of life, and then the waves are here and there, and he says there's something you need to do, you need to have an established heart. Because if you don't have an established heart, you just be tossed up and down by these strange and dangerous doctrines. And the Lord is saying, beware of that. And that's why He's calling us. That's why He's giving us that caution. And look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 14. The caution. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. You understand? You've been on the sea and the waves up and down. And it says now you have a choice. Stabilize the sheep. Steady the sheep. Don't be up and down. Be steady in your doctrine. And be steady in your conviction. Don't be children that are tossed to and fro. Carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sleds of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. And uh, you know, he, when, when Paul, the apostle, got to Galatia, the province of Galatia, he, he was really surprised because he found that they had not observed this apostolic caution. They were up and down in their conviction, in their belief. And he said, be not carried about by every wind of doctrine. Get steady in your conviction, in what you believe. Look at what he told the Galatians in Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. And marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto an gospel. This gospel now, another gospel later, this gospel now, another gospel later, they were up and down, so on, fro, and between different kinds of gospels. And that's what was telling them in, uh, in, uh, in, in Hebrews. And he said, be not carried about 
And you believe the real gospel story of that gospel. And now Galatians, I marvel, I'm surprised, I'm amazed that you're so, so removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Verse 7, which is not another, but there are some, there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ, be not carried about into diverse pervertage versions of the gospel in the stage of the we an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which he have be which we are preached unto you let him be accursed as we said before so say i now again if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received let him be accursed be not carried about by diverse and strange doctrines chapter 2 galatians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 and that because of false brethren but our wares brought in who came in privately privilege to spy out our liberty which we have in christ jesus that they may bring us into bondage you know paul the apostle himself was challenged he had been preaching the gospel the true gospel the pure gospel the gospel that sets us free free from sin free from satan free from sale and free from societal corruption the real gospel, the true gospel, and then some other people came in false brethren. In verse 5 it says, To whom we give place by subjection, no, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. And then it goes to chapter 3 now, chapter 3 of Galatians, verse 1. Chapter 3, verse 1 of foolish Galatians. Foolish Galatians, what do you call them foolish? Did each Take heed to the apostolic caution. They didn't pay any attention to the apostolic warning. And so he said, O oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whom, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. He said, you know the story of redemption, the story of atonement, the story of reconciliation, and the story of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You know it so well, as if Jesus Christ had been crucified among you. You know the story of the promise of the prophecy of Christ. You know the story of the provision of Calvary. You know the story of the redemption that the Lord has come to give us. You know the story of the pardon, the peace, of the purity, and the power that comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. You know the story of the cross of Christ of Calvary you know the story of how Jesus Christ came into this world and he came to give himself so we can have everything promised from Genesis all through to the time he came and then foolish you are that will be switched off your ground be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrine stay on that gospel a gospel that has been evidently demonstrated before you. Polish Galatians who has bewitched you. He said, it's like they use, they use the kind of, uh, they use the spirit or they use the power or they use the secret magic of witchcraft on you. Who has bewitched you. That you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only what I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you not made perfect? By the flesh, they, they were halting. They were moving on from the Spirit to the flesh, from the flesh to the Spirit, carried about by every wind of doctrine. And he said, how foolish you are, that your heart is not stable, your heart, your mind is not stabilized. And then he goes to chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, in verse 9. Galatians chapter 4, looking at it in verse 9. He said to them, but now, 
After that ye have known God, or rather, and known of God, how turn ye again to weak and beggarly elements. You have been on the right ground, on solid ground. You have believed the real and the true gospel. How is it now, after you have known God and you have been known of God, you have turned again to weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? That's the problem of those who are here and there, here and there, and they're not stable. You cannot find them in the same place all the time. He tells us in verse 11, he said, I'm afraid of you. You're not taking heed to the caution, to the warning. I'm afraid of you. Then he said, he gave us the same why he was afraid of them, lest I have bestowed upon you, upon you labor in vain. Then in verse 14, he said, and my temptation was one which was in my flesh. Ye despise 